Hey, this is the countdown. The spot is about to start. Get ready. The Alabama Family Rights Association includes fathers, mothers, grandparents, and children who have experienced the tragedy of custody disputes after divorce. We support the passage of family-friendly legislation designed to ensure that after divorce, children can have meaningful relationships with both parents and extended family. After divorce, children need both parents. Please join Alabama Family Rights Association in fighting for you and your children's rights. If you don't do it, who will? Join us at Alfred.org today. Welcome to the Alabama Family Rights Association, Reform Alabama Family Law Television Program. I'm Michael Polamini. And I'm Chris Hobbs. Alabama Family Rights Association is a grassroots organization consisting of moms, dads, grandparents, family, and friends. We have been successful in passing legislation to protect your rights to your children. Our goal is to reform Alabama family law and provide better protection for our families and children's rights. Children need both parents even after divorce. The Alabama Family Rights Association is proud to present the Family Law Reform Network television program. I know you'll enjoy it. Let's take a look. Our Father in heaven, we thank you from the depths of our spirit that much good might be accomplished in this day. That the strengthening of our families and our nation will come as a result of those who have given of their time their talents and of their monies. And again, we pray that on this day, much honor and glory will be received and our families will receive the increase. Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you, do you get, get, get it? Welcome to our show for the family law reform community, where family and children really matter. I'm here with my co-host, Stanley Charles Thorne. Stanley, thank you so much for your continued commitment on this program. Thank you, Molly. It's good to be back, and it's truly a pleasure to be here with you and our audience. As an attorney, Stanley knows that something is very broken in family law. Stanley's mission is to return the rule of law and respect for the Constitution back to family courts where it belongs. Molly, let's pause for a moment to thank our audience for their feedback. We truly appreciate your emails and your phone calls, and we hope you'll keep those coming in. Your involvement is necessary. We especially want to hear from those willing to be champions of change. We need to hear from those few, those one, those one percenters, we call them, who want to make family law reform a top priority in your life. It'll take not only the one percenters, but all of us working together to accelerate the changes in family law that are so desperately needed by America's children. We have another insightful show ahead. Stanley, I can't wait to get started. Let's begin. In this episode of our show, we are pleased to present Christina Hoff Summers. Ms. Summers is a researcher who writes about issues such as culture and contemporary moral theory. Ms. Summers is best known for one of her books entitled, Who Stole Feminism? How Women Have Betrayed Women. Her articles have been published in the New Republic, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the New England Journal of Medicine, and many others. Ms. Summers graduated Phi Beta Kappa with a Bachelor of Arts degree from New York University, and she has an earned PhD in philosophy from Brandeis University. After serving as a professor in philosophy and ethics at Clark University, she is now a resident scholar at the prestigious American Enterprise Institute for Public Policy Research in Washington, D.C. Ms. Summers lectures at colleges and universities all across America as a speaker in the campus lecture program of the Claire Booth Luce Policy Institute. She also serves on the Board of Advisors of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We are delighted and honored to present Christina Hoff Summers. What I did in my book, Who Stole Feminism, is that I looked at women in education, women in health, women in the economy, women in the law, and what I found was that not everything, but many, many of the facts that we took to be 
truths about women's oppression were not true. They were oversimplifications, or they were only looking at women's misfortunes and not considering men. And so, for example, I became very interested in boys' education because at the time, all we heard was that girls were shortchanged victims. They were being held back by our universities and our schools. But when I looked at the data from the U.S. Department of Education, I discovered that girls were considerably stronger than boys in most areas, not all, but most areas, and that the boys' deficits were not being addressed, whereas we were doing a good job helping the girls. So I tried to expose myths and offer what I thought were constructive solutions. We really have to appreciate a researcher like Christina Hoff Summers, who has such a passion for the truth, willing to challenge the status quo. She is also willing to uncover and expose the imbalance and the discrimination that has created a culture of, of misinformation as we have been manipulated and the, the public sentiment has been manipulated in such a way that we allow our government to have way more control way beyond than what they've been authorized to do so, so that they can then pretend to fix a problem that didn't exist in the first place, only to create new problems. Christina Hoff Summers' book is a real eye-opener about just how effective their propaganda campaign has been. And when I say they, I mean the radical fringe elements of the feminist movement, the extremists in the movement. Her book is well-researched, well-documented, and it is strong and powerful. The message is incredibly powerful because it is based upon an academic integrity that she really lives. And she's challenging this whole myth that girls are victims, that women are poor, helpless, needy victims that need to get protected. Well, her book contains many revealing insights into how we've all been taken for fools by these extremists. Uh, and as she explains how the, uh, the agenda of the extremists has been executed, we understand how and why they've driven a wedge between women and men. And we also understand how they want to restructure our society and that they have no interest whatsoever in harmony or unity between the genders. And they certainly have no interest in a, in a society where the genders treat each other with a mutual respect and dignity. Instead, these radical extremists who, who claim to be feminists but really aren't, they're pitting men against women in an attempt to divide and conquer. And that is clear, is most clear in our family court system where that same mentality occurs. Men constantly, fathers are finding this de degrading negative experience in family court where they don't stand a chance. Nowhere other than in family court is the discrimination against men more blatant when one parent is excommunicated from the lives of their child based on gender. Well, there's no place where it affects a person more than in their family relationships that are so precious. These radical feminists play gender politics that are not gender neutral. And when our public policy is not gender neutral, we are manipulated, and we see that nowhere more clearly than in our family courts. We're going to find out more about that and more about Christina Hoff Summer's book, Who Stole Feminism, when we come back. Please stay tuned. Thanks for joining us on Family Law Reform Network TV. Please stay with us. What would happen is uh, I found, for example, that there were mistakes that were in women's textbooks and that were on fact sheets and that were disseminated, that entered the media echo chamber. For example, the time I was writing Who's Told Feminism, we were told that 150,000 girls died in the United States every year from anorexia nervosa, this eating disorder where a girl just starves herself to death. And Naomi Wolf mentioned this in her book, The Beauty Myth. She said these women are being starved not by nature, but by men. Men were blamed. So there was always this theme of blaming men. What I found was not only were men not to blame, it was a much more complicated problem, but the statistic was ridiculously exaggerated. I called the the National Center for Health Statistics and found out that a tiny, tiny number of girls die from anorexia. Fewer than 500, not 150,000 in most of those deaths. I mean, they're all tragic and it's a serious problem, but it was being exaggerated way out of proportion. And what I discovered is when you tried to correct a myth 
and address it responsibly. Take it seriously by treating it uh, carefully. Uh, even though, though I was trying to do that, you, I was accused of being a backlasher, of a traitor to my gender, anti-woman. On one occasion, I was called a non-woman. <laughs> Some critic referred to Christina Hoff Summers and Margaret Thatcher, those two female impersonators. Well, I'm not a female impersonator, and I'm not a backlasher, and not anti-woman. I'm pro-woman, but I'm also a philosophy professor, and I'm pro, you know, good, good research and abiding by rules of evidence. What we learn from Christina Hoff Summers here is that we cannot believe everything that we hear, see, and read in the major media. We've got plenty of references to indicate that, that that's not always true and that we have to be very conscientious about our sources. And Christina Hoff Summers does a fabulous job of giving example after example of what she refers to as the media echo chamber, taking facts that, that were presented to them without critical examination, and then it's repeated over and over and magnified over and over until literally millions of people are hearing what amount to outright lies, but they're, they're presented as truth. And it's really scary when that information is then used as a basis for decisions in family court. Well, you, you can't make sound public policy based on lies and misinformation. And I, I really admire Christina Hoff Summers' dedication to setting the record straight. As, as our regular viewers on this show know, that is why we are doing this show. There is so much uh, poor and, and disastrous public policy that's been based on misinformation, myths, half-truths, and we are about setting the record straight. If we ever get our facts wrong on this show, we want people to bring that to our attention. If we're ever wrong on the facts or the law, we want to hear from you. And we, it's why we in candor and, and in good faith challenge the, uh, the dominant paradigm to, to not dig in and defend an indefensible status quo, but to actually get on board with the idea that this is a system that cries out for change and we need to get about changing it. She articulates, though, what we are up against, that when you try to challenge and correct a system that's whole, the whole systems are based on lies, that you run into the, you run the risk of being run out of town, basically. Well, she describes the kill the messenger attitude that she was received with, where she suffered incredible personal attacks, and she was, she gave a couple of examples in that last segment, but she didn't mention the death threats and the other uh, personal attacks that, that were vicious and uh, intended to intimidate. Well, I get very, uh, I, it's offensive for me as I listen to some of this, what I call extremist propaganda that's under the guise of feminism when it really isn't because this, this extremist mentality pretty much is telling me, sending me the message as a woman that I ought to be angry, that I am disadvantaged, that this is a war against men and women and, some, and women have to win and yet women, I'm told that I'm a victim. And this propaganda is telling me that I need protection. In an age of diversity and tolerance, it just seems to run completely contrary to where we are as a society. Molly, it's fair to say that the most noble goals of the early feminist movement have been largely realized in America today. You wouldn't know that by what they continue to spew out from the radical feminists. We're gonna come back with more information from Christina Hoff Summers in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for joining us on Family Law Reform Network TV. Please stay with us. We hope you enjoyed part one of this two-part series. Alabama Family Rights Association wants to educate you on our goals to reform Alabama family law. Please join us as we work to reform Alabama family law. If you don't do it, who will? I'm Chris Hobbs. I'm Michael Polamini. See, See you, you next time. time. Alabama Family Law prevents children from being loved by their entire families. The Alabama Family Rights Association is working to reform Alabama Family Law. Our children deserve two parents, especially after divorce. If you don't do it, who will? I really love my dad because he taught me how to ride my bike and to swim. And he taught me to never give up.